Marabag time. Let's see what we've got. This is a special thing. We'll find out what this is. We'll do this last, but this is going to be interesting. So don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like Marabag videos, and if it's your first time here especially, if you want to subscribe and see what else I make. I make lots of videos, not just Marabag, but also lots of repairs. And often what you see in Marabag are things I'm getting for repairs or things to do repairs with. So this is a drill tap set. There you go, so it's a drill and tap set. So you drill it out and tap it at the same time. But the idea is that you can put this into like your drill or you know hexagonal type thing and drill it out with that. And without even stopping, you just shove a thread straight into it as well. These don't feel very heavy. The colouring is also very interesting. I don't know how good these are. No, they might literally be single use. Oh, there we go. Here's a marking. Right there. High speed steel M10 by 1.5. There we go. So it is marked after all. Excellent. I just thought this might be handy for things. Let's check the file out. Got some paper. That's more paper. Oh, there we go. Here's something. So what do we get? Shift registers, uh, 74LS166AN, I think that says. I'll put some overlays saying what they are, data sheets or something. This is a uh, hex inverter, 74ALS04BD, or SN74. This is flip flops. SN74S74N and then here we have some hex inverting buffers which are SN7406N right out of the race to see which parts arrive first from China element 14 or RS components RS components arrive first element 14 arrives second and China is yet to arrive so I think the M14 one arrived about four days after the RS one, and the Element 14 was also ordered about four days before the RS one. So, RS was faster in this case, in case anyone cares about that stuff. But that's not always the way. Sometimes Element 14 is faster. Sometimes China is faster. Not often, but sometimes. Of course, with China's ones, you don't actually know if you're getting the real thing. But at least with these, you know you are. Right, let's see what's in this one. Ethernet cables. I decided that in my motorhome where we do the events we work at on a lot of weekends, I was going to replace all the cabling with new cables. Rather than making my own, I thought I'd just buy some pre-made ones. So that's what I've actually done. I mean, I can make my own. I have actually made my own. The only cable I've got is solid core, so it's not really meant for mobile situations where there's vibration and flexing and stuff like that. It's meant for like building installation, so it's put in place and never moved again. <laughs> we can handle a bit of movement, obviously, but you know, eventually they'll break. So I've decided to get some of these. 28/7 stranded copper wires. So it's, yep, stranded core, one gigabit yellow half meter. These will be the same, just in blue. At least I can be more confident that these cables will be more reliable because it's being stranded core. They're meant for being moved around a bit more and a bit more resilience to them. So that's why I've decided to, to buy them because they're not expensive. So I've been links down below for these. Now we've got the special box. Now this has been sent to me by another YouTuber. He told me it was coming. He hasn't told me what it is. It's a mystery to all of us right now. So this has actually been sent to me by Ian Scott Johnston. He does some really excellent repair videos and, and his great skills. And he makes the PDVS2 minis and those, you know things like that. He's it's got a really interesting YouTube channel as well, so I'll just you go check that out if you're not familiar with him. Ian Scott Johnson, look it up. Let's find out what he's actually sent me, because say I don't know what this is. He wouldn't tell me. This is a prototype, I believe, of something he's decided to make. I don't know if he's gonna be selling these. I don't think he was going to sell them. I think he was gonna maybe open source it. I'm not quite sure, don't quote me on that. Let's look at it before I read the note. So Ian's got a laser cutter and all sorts of stuff. He's got really good equipment set up at his place. 
so he likes his acrylic panels because it's really easy for him to make these panels. DMM Continuity Tester. Let's get an Arduino Pro Mini on it. Oh, my favourite. Good choice, Ian. <laughs> Paul Daniels will be spinning. <laughs> Arduino, Paul. Arduino. And there's his web address down here. IanJohnston.com. Go and check out his website. And that's what it looks like. Very curious. I'm going to have to read the note. So here's the note. It looks like it's for testing the continuity function of multimeters. He was obviously seeing my testing of multimeters when I'm doing these reviews and testing continuity speed. And I actually had the same kind of thought, I have to be honest, about having some kind of test set up so you can create a meaningful measurement rather than just, you know, slapping the probes together and seeing how good they seem to respond. So this is obviously being used to do testing. It's given some examples here of response times. Nice. Yeah, to try this out. All right, let's plug a battery in. Version one. So I've got it plugged into this Fluke 175 here, which I reviewed recently. Let's chuck it to your continuity test. There we go. Let's play with some buttons. Um, the instruction says, we're supposed to default and adjust mark. You can hear beeping, obviously. Seems so interesting, it's got that pattern to the fluke. Oh, looks like the limit 0.18 milliseconds. That's how fast that is. So, if you compare this to what's on his testing of his own meters has done so far. The Boyman 786, 0 0.01 milliseconds. Yeah. Well, what I'm getting right now is 0.18 on the Fluke 175. That's pretty quick. It's like it's better than the 87. 85.3, BM257, 38 milliseconds. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> well, that works nicely. Let's check a different meter. Let's check the 117. Nothing so far. So it's about 0.21. It's got the same pattern. Hear that? So that's still pretty quick. So 175 is slightly faster than 117. Straight away, instantly, you know which one is slightly quicker. That's brilliant. Um, you know, I had the feeling this one was slightly faster. There wasn't much in it. Just for my, you know, my rough testing with the probes. So, yeah, that's good. Let's test something else. Here's my 786, which I saw on the list here. I think, yes, he's already got one. So he's already tested that himself. Let's see what we can get out of it. See if we get any different results. So he was seeing better than 0.1 or 0.01 microseconds on his unit. Yeah, look at that. 0.01, yeah, this is like instant. Time to go all the way up. Yeah. We've got the Fluke 107 out now. Let's see what this one does. Yeah, so it's about 50 and 60 milliseconds there. Still not quite catching everyone. Two fifty milliseconds is the slowest I can go on this. And it's it's 
got the same pattern, so I think it is catching everyone now. So 200 milliseconds there. It's not catching everyone. That gives you an idea of how much slower this one is. So now I'm just trying this Mustol MT11, and I can't get it to beep at all. <laughs> wind it right down. I've got a 250 milliseconds pulse time. I can't get it to beep. It's going to reduce the space ratio right down, see if it comes down to make it work. Oh, got something then. Okay, if I have a space ratio of one millisecond. And a massive mark time. I'll do one millisecond again. So it's almost basically constantly on then, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't respond well. Right, let's try the BM235. Seventeen milliseconds. Twenty is more reliable. So that's for those settings there. Well, thank you much, Ian. That's brilliant. This is a really good little tool. I was thinking of a similar sort of thing myself as having some kind of way of testing the actual continuity with a measured time. And yeah, you obviously had the same idea. Well done, Ian. <laughs> Differences, you actually took the effort to build one. <laughs> Excellent, thank you very much, Ian. Much appreciated, mate. That's great. Very handy tool. No doubt that will be seen in a lot of future videos on doing multimeter reviews. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if it's your first time here, as I said before. And if you do want to see those multimeter reviews, they're on my main page. It's a playlist just for multimeter reviews, so you can get to them. I may even link them up here or something. And at the end of this video, there's playlists here for probably mailbags, something YouTube thinks you should watch here, YouTube subscribe link over here, and the Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel, help me to buy things for mailbag and things to fix. Catch you later.